So there's over 200,000 people in Victoria who have blindness or have low vision. Around about 2,000 of them receive services from Guide Dogs Victoria. We have over 50 people who are involved in the breeding, the training, the development of guide dogs here. The training of a guide dog actually starts pretty much from the moment it's born. Our staff down in the, the breeding centre and the nursery work with the, the puppies and teach it some of the real basic manners and, and obedience that it needs. The journey of our guide dogs really starts here with our breeding program. They look like Labradors, but in lots of ways they're, they're slightly different to mainstream labs. And we thoroughly scrutinise their health um, through x-ray processes, um, eye examinations, and also the health histories of both themselves and their um, siblings. Uh, we currently have 30 breeding females and 11 active stud dogs. Hi, I'm Janice Aldred. I'm the Canine Health and Welfare Manager. The average litter for us is around about seven pups. We have had the odd litter go higher than that and our recent one was 12 healthy pups were born. So what we do from the 10 days of age is we start nurturing these pups and it's really important for them to start getting to feel that there is something out there rather than just mum. Pups I have in here today, they're growing up to about 11 weeks. We help enrich the puppies' lives, uh, socialise the puppies, give them little learning challenges which helps their learning and their memory as well as making them a lot calmer 365 days of the year. Even Christmas Day, all the public holidays, we're still here to make them happy healthy, confident little pups ready to go to their puppy raising homes. Around about 170 puppies on the program at the moment. We have a, a wide range of puppy raisers in, in lots of different areas. We, we cover the, um, the Melbourne metro area as well as Geelong, uh, Ballarat and Bendigo. A group of about eight of us sort of manage about 35 to 40 dogs each to produce a well socialised, not easily distracted dog that's used to different environments, different objects and people and places so that when they come in for a training they can cope with you know pretty much anything. So this is our assessment block, this is where all the dogs stay for two weeks to get assessed by the trainers. We have a whole bunch of intake volunteers in the first week that spend the whole 12 hours with them. So that way they've always got a human contact with them. The dogs go out to training anywhere from 8 o'clock in the morning. They generally come back around midday and then they'll go out again in the afternoon and come back around 4 o'clock and that's when we take over looking after them in this facility. This is where the dogs sleep overnight. They have two to a kennel. Two dogs to a kennel keep each other company can house anywhere up to 50 dogs. That includes taking care of all their enrichment requirements, dietary requirements, looking after them while they're in training. Welcome to the vet clinic. My name's Anne and I'm one of the part-time vets that works here at Guide Dogs. And we look after the health of the puppies the whole way through from when they're born and then as they do their training and then even a little bit when they go out with their handlers. And we can take x-rays, to make sure their, their bones are healthy too. Good boy, Tanja. Steady, steady. So training is usually 20 weeks for the dogs. We have an eight week, a 12 week, and a 16 week assessment point. It's really nice, this boy's very calm. He's not very anxious. We look at their body language. First walk we do is just generally around campus and maybe just over the street to get some traffic and come back. Then we progressively go into residential, a little bit more business and shopping areas and it gets busier. Good boy. So you see there's no hesitation whatsoever. He just does them like it's not new. Good boy. Can you find the way? Where is it? Find the way. That's it. Good boy. Once they're about a few weeks in, we start putting the harness on um, and start taking them around residential streets and working on roads. Yeah, good boy. We use a lot of food rewards in the early days of guide dog training and we start to peter that out over the 20 week program. Um, and then it's basically reliant on the dog to have a really good bond and every guide dog handler will know exactly where their dog likes to be scratched.
Here we are today in Arnold Cook House. This is our residential facility where individuals come to, to complete their training with their new guide dogs. Um, prior to that happening, we need to go through a very extensive matching phase to make sure that we get the right dog for the right person. Today, what we've got set up is an obstacle course. So this is a way of replicating things like street furniture, cafe tables and chairs, and it teaches the individual how to follow their dog through the obstacles nice and safely. I'm Brendan Spencer, I'm 22 years old. This is Warren, down here. Warren's four years old, so I've had Warren for three years. I've now been able to fulfill um, life goals and certainly achieved through that. I completed a year and a half at the Australian Catholic University. Had the opportunity to live independently and will be heading to India for our first ever blind soccer tournament in September. They're just amazing to work for and it's really good to know that we all live up to the values of the organisation, the honesty, the accountability and at the end of the day it's for the people who come along to us and need that service, we're there to help them to go and live an independent life. I mean this has actually altered my life in the best, most positive way that it could have. So I feel so fortunate to have had guide dogs in my life and I know that all of the people that I have ever spoken to using a cane or a dog feel exactly the same way.